dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Brian Donlevy in The High Timber, United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. Now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where those famous names in motion pictures join us for your entertainment in plays we know that you'll enjoy. Our star is that popular and capable actor, Brian Donlevy, and the title of our play, The High Timber. In our story, Brian Donlevy becomes a hard-fighting, hard-driving, Northwoodsman lumber foreman with cutting schedules to meet and dangers and obstacles to overcome. There is action, drama, and romance. We'll have the curtain for Act One of The High Timber in a moment. Here now is your announcer, Wendell Niles, with an important message. High school graduates, you can continue your education and step right into an interesting career in a day for the U.S. Air Force. The Air Force will give you the best aviation technical training, and you earn while you learn. When you're selected for the Air Force, you're with the finest type of young Americans, with opportunity to move up steadily, and if you desire, to study and qualify for training to become officers. Inquire today about the special opportunities for you at the U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Now, once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of The High Timber, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Crocker. <laughs> belonged to the great timberland, even if very little of it belonged to him. To the sound of an axe biting into a well of sawdust or the sight of standing timber. For Steve had been most everything around a lumber camp, from a very humble pot wrestler in the kitchen to his present estate as gaffer boss and foreman of an outfit. But Steve was looking toward the next step ahead, biggest step of all, running the mill in town. Perhaps that was why Steve was a little excited that morning in town as he approached the field office of Jim Donovan, district superintendent for Wagner Lumber. He would hear news of the mill job. Maybe that put the light in his eye as he reached for the door. Either that, or what was waiting for him inside, Jim Donovan's secretary, Julie. Hello, Julie. Steve. Steve, what are you doing in town? Jim sent for me. I... Didn't have a chance to write. Here, <laughs> let me look at you. Uh, Steve, if I'd known, I'd been all pretty for you. You're pretty enough. Come here. I'd like to kiss you. Well, not in the office, Steve. I guess it's all right to kiss the woman you're going to marry. Even twice. Oh, oh Steve. What? When are we going to be married? Why, well, just as soon as I buy that three-storied brick mansion here in town? I'd settle for a lot less. Not me, Julie. Just make it soon, Steve. Huh? Well, maybe this little summons is going to help things. Jim? Yeah. Who knows? Maybe this is the mill job. Oh, Steve, you don't really think that... I don't know. Has he said anything to you? Well, no, of course not. I'm only his secretary. <laughs> yeah, he must be waiting to spring the good news. How is that bald-headed character, anyway? Is that you, Steve? <laughs> well, it isn't some brush rat looking for a job. Well, come on in, Steve. I want to talk to you. <laughs> don't make any dates for the night, will you? All right, darling. Well, sit down, Steve. Thanks. Good to see you. Have a cigar. Thanks. This time, genuine Havana's. Oh, well, now you're talking. You shouldn't hold out these things on me. You'd be surprised the things I hold out on you. <laughs> right? Thanks. Hey, but why are you being so good to me? I don't like you being this good to me. No? Why? Because this is a build-up to a favor. This isn't the build-up to what I want to hear. What do you want to hear? You know what I want to hear. I want to hear that I've got that mill job. Well... How about it? Sorry, not yet. Not yet. Hang that answer. You've been giving me that for a year. Not so fast, I Steve. I can't help it. I wanted this to be it. You know how I feel about this and how Julie and I have wanted to get married. I know, but listen. I'm tired of being stalled like this. Look at my record. What does a man produce for if he can't get ahead? 
I've been a wood tick longer than I care to remember. I want to move along. Steve, listen to me. You know, there's no one wants to move you up more than I do. Yeah, I've heard that before, too. And you know it's true, Steve. But you've got to face the facts. This is a big outfit. Down here, I'm the bull of the woods. But up in the front office, I'm only a number to most of them. That mill job is a big job. The front office will fill it. Well, certainly your recommendation is going to mean something. Something, sure. But for most of them up there, Steve, you'll still be just a brush rat. A brush rat with ambitions. All right. You're purveying all these facts of life. You tell me. There must be some way. What does a man in my setup have to do? Well, it's very simple. He has to do something spectacular. Something that'll be sure to catch the eye of every official in the company. Like what? Like this little golden opportunity which presented itself just the other day. Shoot. The company bid on the first chunk of construction timber for the new dam. Tremendous order. Yeah, go on. Knowing the scarcity of help and the fact that every cutting outfit we've got is working 24-hour shifts on backlog orders, the company bid high. The company didn't want the first chunk. Oh. Unfortunately, our high bid was low. So now it's either produce or lose one of the biggest potential customers we've had. Oh. Well, how do I fit into this little golden opportunity? Well, like this. We can get what we need from the Redfield acreage. You go in with a crew and get it. And we've got 60 days in which to produce it. That's not much time. You can say that again. But I'll tell you what. You give me a hundred men. I'd be lucky to give you 20 men, Steve. 20 men in 60 days? It can't be done. You can do it, and I'm sure there'd be a bonus for you if you can come in on time. A bonus? What kind of a bonus? The company is always generous, Steve, and this time it's in a spot. How much, I said? $5,000. Mm. Well, what about the men? I wouldn't take the job if there wasn't something in it for them. They'd be taken care of, too. <sighs> All right. Why not? I'll take a crack at it. Good boy, Steve. You'll have to pick up your outfit this afternoon and take the train out of here tonight. <laughs> Julie's going to love me for this. Julie? Yeah. Big evening together. Saying goodbye at a railroad station. Well, I'll see you later. You got all your men, Steve? Got them. Pretty good outfit, too. Got some good men. I was able to get another man for you at Redfield. Fine. Who's that? A fellow named Conklin. He may be a little hard to handle. Why? He wanted to run this little show himself. That's why. Oh, well, I'll keep him in line. Any hard feelings, we'll kiss and make up. I can sure use that. Uh, is, it, is it you, the train to Redfield? Yeah. Oh, sure. Sure it is. Hiya, boss. Are you in this outfit of mine? <laughs> Am I in this outfit of yours? Why, boss, I'm Whitey, your kitchen mechanic. The cook, remember? Oh, sure. sure. You make a good cup of coffee, Whitey? Oh, I make the most potent cup of coffee this side of Brazil. <laughs> the coffee I make is so potent it'll grow hair on a billiard ball. <laughs> Here's your chance, Jim. If I could only be sure. I wonder what Julie is. I've been so busy all day, I barely had a chance to see her. Oh, here she comes now. Oh. Hey, what in the world is she carrying? Oh, Steve! Hi, honey. Hi. I thought I wasn't going to make it. Hello, Jim. Hi, Julie. What's this you've got? Well, it's for you to take up to the camp with you. Yeah. Great Scott. A pooch. <laughs> Isn't he cute? He's the homeliest mutt I ever saw. <laughs> hey, he bit me. Well, it's a smart dog. You can't insult him. Well, that's me. Good luck, Steve. Thanks, Jim. Oh, Steve. Yes, Julie. I'll be pulling for you. It's our turn, Julie. You just can't miss. Hurry up, Steve. That train's going to leave without you. Yeah. Bye, Julie. Well, goodbye, darling. Julie? Yes? Is this Pooch's house broken? What did you say? I said, never mind. He just answered that question himself. How are you coming in here, Whitey? Oh, fine, boss. Getting squared away. Yeah. What'd you fix for that pooch of mine? Uh, this here stew. Oh, let me taste it. <laughs> hey, you think he'll eat it? Eat it? Why, that's the finest mulligan stew you or he or anyone else will ever eat. Well, save it. Feed the pup and put a call into the men. I want to talk to them. Got everybody here. But the men out there topping that spar tree, they already know what I'm going to say. Men, we have 60 days to get the job done here. 
It's going to require the best from every one of us. That's right, Pooch, you too. <laughs> now, just remember one thing. I've got the responsibility of this operation, and I'll be running it my way, as I always do when I'm in charge. That's all. Hiya, hiya, hiya! Hey, boss, they're at the top of the first bar tree. Sure enough, are. Hiya, hiya! You the boss? That's right. They said I could find you here. I'm Conklin. Oh, yeah. Jim Donovan told me about you. You're a day late reporting to work here, Conklin. Am I? Yes. And every day counts on this job. Well, I knew you wouldn't get your machinery up until today. There wouldn't be much doing. You've got it all figured out, have you? Why not? Any hard feelings? No, no, not at all. Just remember who's boss now that you're here, Conklin. Why don't you find out where you're going to bunk and then come back here? Good enough. I could use something to eat. Sure. And after you're through eating, you can help Whitey here. He could use an extra grease ball this afternoon. What do you mean? Me work as a grease ball? That's right, Conklin. All the machinery isn't in yet, remember? Yeah. I'll remember. <laughs> I don't like that fella. Ah, uh, he's all right. We'll take the starch out of him. I tell you, I don't like him. I've seen the likes of him before. He's going to be bad luck to this outfit. What do you mean? There's no such thing as bad luck. <laughs> hey, what's that? Uh, there you see, it started already. Why, oh, it's the pooch. Uh, he's pulled the dishcloth off the table. <laughs> Little rascal. Getting even with you for that stew you fed him. <laughs> Come here, you bad pooch. <laughs> hey, don't fight me. I didn't make the stew. A pause briefly from our story, The High Timber, starring Brian Donlevy, to bring you an important message from your government. Ladies and gentlemen, our Army and our Air Force are critically short of physicians and dentists. Over 2,000 volunteers from these two professions are urgently needed today to safeguard and care for the health of the men and women who, as members of the United States Army and United States Air Force, are serving you and me at home and overseas. Young physicians and dentists, particularly those who did not serve in the armed services during World War II, have been asked by their government to act now to volunteer for duty at once. If you are one of these young physicians or dentists, please write or wire either the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force at once and volunteer your services. If you know of one of these young physicians or dentists, please call his attention to this urgent message. Thank you. The curtain rises on Act Two of The High Timber, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Crocker. With a mere 60 days to move the timber out of the large Redfield area, with a bonus awaiting him, and the strong possibility that he will achieve the mill job he wanted for so long, Steve Crocker drives his undermanned crew with the determination of a man who usually wins. Slowly but surely, the timberlands yield a man and machine. Timberjack, engineer, bushwhacker, and high rigger. These and others, using their weapons of saws and axes, of leg irons and caterpillar tractors, see victory in sight. But not without trouble. All right, Al. Yes, Pete. Try her again. Fire her up. Hey, it started. Yeah. Well, we licked her finally. Now you get over there on the south side. Give him some help there. Yeah, but it's getting late, Steve. You know, by the time... I we're... said get over there. We're going to work till we can't see anymore. All right, Steve. You're the boss. Don't you forget that. Hey, hey, boss. Yeah, Whitey? You better come now and get something to eat. You ain't eating all day. Later, Whitey. There's a truck stalled up on the ridge. We've got to have it running before morning. Boss, listen to Make me. Make it quick, will you, Whitey? Boss, do we have to hit it so hard? We're right on schedule now. We're going to be ahead of schedule. You hear me? All right, but the men, Steve, they're beginning to resent the way you're driving them. What are you talking about? You're crazy. Oh, I knew you wouldn't listen. Oh, sure, they gripe a little, but they're getting the job done. Why, even Conklin, he's doing a job, a great job. Yeah, I forget it. You forget it. Tell me this, Whitey. Hmm? Somebody said there was a small slide on the road into town. Yeah, that's right, boss. This is slide country in the time of the year for them. Now, listen. I want to get three extra truckloads of gasoline up here, you understand? Quick. Yeah, boss. I want enough gasoline to run this equipment. A few more days we'll be here, and I want to get it up here and have it here, right now. Right, boss. 
We'll eat at sundown. Again tonight? Again tonight. And don't worry about the men, Whitey. They're with me. I can't wait to get these boots off my good doggies. Uh, uh, Compton, I'm done in. Yeah, and how do you like this eating supper at midnight? Well, it could be worse. Sure, sure. How? Uh, you can do worse than work for Steve Crocker. Yeah? He's a sucker born every minute. Is that so? Sure. Just ask yourself this. Who does the work? And who gets the glory? Hello, Whitey. Anything left to eat? Oh, sure, boss. I got something here for you. I don't know what. Well, just warm it up and give it to me. Oh, did you check up on the gasoline? Oh, yeah, boss. And I'm going into town myself tonight to make sure we get it. How's the pooch? <whistles> Come here, pup. <whistles> nice pup. I don't know about that much. <whistles> hey, wait a minute. You insult him and he bites my hand. Well, I'm sorry, but I worry about that pooch. He gets out everything you put him in. He even got out there in the woods. Now, that poor little fella would make a nice hors d'oeuvre for one of them big hawks. Ah, well, you better keep him right here inside the shack. Yeah, maybe so. Oh, I uh, almost forgot, boss. A uh, letter come for you today, here. Yeah. Oh, thanks. It's uh, from her, I think, the young lady at the station. Oh, it is, huh? Yeah, she sure was pretty. She was. <laughs> I'll go with you on that one. Now, lose yourself and let me read this, will you? Take the pooch. Yeah, you see where we stand around. <laughs> My darling Steve. How I've missed you. If it weren't for your letters and the knowledge that you I don't know what I'd do. Jim tells me of your marvelous progress, that you may even beat the 60-day limit. Oh, I know you'll succeed, Steve. This is ours for us. I, well, let me tell you, I saw the most darling house the other day. Not the mansion you used to speak of, but a cottage with white shingles and green shutters. Perhaps I shouldn't mention this to you, but... I was afraid it might get away from us. And the way things look now... Now, what do you think? Should I give them a check? All my love, Julie. Whitey. What is it, boss? What is it? Look, Whitey, we've got this thing licked up here, haven't we? Ooh, I guess so. Less than a week to go. Mm, of course, a lot of things can happen in a week's time. That's why I like you, Whitey. You're so optimistic. Listen... You're going into town tonight. Yeah, boss? Send a wire to Julie, care of Jim Donovan. Just say this. Go ahead. I'm telling you, men, you suckers to work like this. I think Conklin is right. Sure, I'm right. This job can't be done in 60 days, not by human beings. Uh, and if by some miracle it is done in the contracts, men, I ask you, who gets the glory and the dough that goes with it? You don't think Steve Crocker's making a sweat for nothing, do you? He's in for a great big fat bonus. I say we let Steve know where we stand. And let me do the talk. Morning, Whitey. How about a little jab, huh? Yeah, uh, coming right up, boss. Hey, where the devil is everybody? Uh, they're... Uh... Oh, all over at the bunkhouse. Why? Oh, I don't know. They're... We've got timber to cut. It's, it's Conklin, boss. I told you he was bad luck. He's been talking to the boys. Oh, he has. Yeah, he says you're pushing him too hard. You better go see him. You bet your life I will. Say, what the devil is going on here? Why aren't you men out in the timber? I guess I'm supposed to be the spokesman here, Steve. All right, Conklin. Speak. The men here and myself have discovered that you're in for a big bonus at this contract completed on time. All we want is a proportionate share. That's all, huh? That's all. And if I don't quite see eye to eye with you? <laughs> We're not going to break our backs for you, Steve. Did you figure this out all by yourself, Conklin? What do you think? Brilliant. Brilliant. Now, you men listen to me. I want you to know this. If I fulfill this contract, I get $5,000. Anyone here want to object to that? Anyone here who thinks I don't deserve that? Now, let me tell you something else. 
Before I accepted this job, I insisted that you men share in a kitty of your own. Yeah, but how much, Steve? Yeah, how much I that'll know. be, I don't know. I know it'll be fair. Fulfilling this contract means a lot to the company. You ask me how much, I can't tell you. But I ask every man among you, whoever worked with me before, ask yourself this. Did I ever let you down? Did I? I'm with you, Steve. So am I. Yeah. Okay. That's more like it. Now, Conklin, let me... <coughs> Thank you for your help. Whitey, uh, give me yes, that sir? pail of water over there. Uh, yes, sir. Right. Here, sir. <coughs> Get up, Conklin. If I didn't need every man, I'd tie you to a truck with a choker and drag you out of camp. headed for a spell of trouble. I feel it in my bones. What's happened now? The pooch, he's gone. Find him. I can't find him. He's gone, I tell you. Well, I can't worry about that now. I'm worrying about gasoline. There's been a slide down the road. Oh, here comes the gas truck now. I can see. I've got eyes. You go find that pooch or there's going to be the devil to pay. You're the last one? That's right, Steve. Well, thank heaven you got through. How bad is the slide? How bad? I can see it from above. There'll be a week opening that road. Well, that's their worry. We can operate here. That's all I care about. Well, Whitey, where's the pooch? Boss, I've been all over these woods. He's gone. The timber just swallowed him up. Oh, now you don't have to take it so oh, hard. But he was the cutest. I know how much. cute he was. To think I spanked him yesterday, and all he did was to chew up my best suit. All right, all right, But Whitey. I just can't stand the thought that sweet little fella being a hors d'oeuvre for one of them kicking hawks. See, Steve, Steve, come quick. What's happened? Conklin, hit by falling timber. Where is he? Well, we carried him into the bunkhouse. Let's go. Is he messed up pretty bad? Pretty bad, Steve. How did it happen? Well, I wasn't there, but from what they say, a crew was topping a spy break. Conklin was below. Top breaks off, pops like a cannon. Conklin runs right under him. Eh, uh, this is liable to put a cramp in our schedule. All right, men, move back. Back, give him a little air. He is all messed up. I I think it's touch and go, Steve. Quiet. Seems to be opening his eyes. Hey, Steve. Guys, you did. Save oh. your strength, Conklin. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. We're going to take care of you. That goes with working in my outfit. You're all right, Steve. All right. Al. Yes, Steve? We've got to get this man to a hospital. But the road is blocked. We're going to open it. Mm -hmm. We're going to take every man and every piece of equipment we have down there and drive a hole through it. We'll never get through here in time then, Steve. We'll never make it. Our contract doesn't seem very important now. A life is a life, that louse. Come on, let's get at it. Come on, get that cat lined up there, will you? Behind the truck. Behind it! Oh, boy. What is it, Whitey? You make a lot of dust around here, ain't you? Got enough equipment here to put a hole in Mount Whitney. All because some numbskull rosin belly forgets to pull his ears in. How Conklin... Oh, the boss, oh. I guess the boys ain't told you what Conklin pulled out from under that tree. Look, Steve. The pooch, Whitey. <laughs> it's him, all right. Well, Whitey, we didn't lose everything after all. Sit down, Steve. Thanks, Jim. How's Conklin getting along? All right. I didn't mean to throw you a curve there, but thank heaven the man has a chance to live. Oh, he's going to pull through fine. Even if he did delay us three days and knock all of us out of that bonus. Ah, oh, that was a tough break. Wasn't it? I thought maybe the company would have a heart after what happened, and since we came through only three days over the contract... Steve, I'm afraid the company would never be that charitable. No? That is, the company will never have the chance. What are you building up to? I've been holding out on you. Again? Again. This time, Steve, it was seven days of grace. What? <laughs> You're home free with time to spare. <laughs> Why, you bandit. <laughs> but I love you. You probably want to let the men in on this news. Yeah. Yeah, but first I've got to let someone else know. She may be interested, too. Oh, where's Julie? She's here. Oh, oh. Hello, Steve. Hey, come along with me. So where? Don't ask questions. Just come along with me. Here's your coat. I put it. This way. That boss of yours was holding out on me. Holding out? Seven days of grace on the Redfield contract. Oh, Mr. Vendor, does that mean that... It, it does. Oh, Steve. 
Harry, how it's your job at the mill? Uh, let me tell you something else I've been holding out on you. What? This. Why, Steve, that's the wedding ring. So it is. Well, let's go put it where it belongs, shall we? The curtain falls in the final act of The High Timber. Our star, Brian Donlevy, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. This is important. This is urgent. Over 2,000 young physicians and dentists are needed as volunteers at once for service in the United States Army or United States Air Force. These physicians and dentists are required to safeguard the health of the men and women who are serving our country in the armed services. If you are a physician or a dentist, you are needed now. Write or wire the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force at once, volunteering for active duty. Let me repeat that. Write or wire the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force today. Or see your local U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Now back at the microphone, our star, Brian Donlevy, and our producer. Brian, before we do anything else, I want to tell you how much I enjoyed your latest United Artists picture, Impact. Well, thanks, E.P. I caught one of Harry Popkin's previews. Another producer? <laughs> That's right. I thought you and Ella Range, Charlie Colburn, and Helen Walker earned top honors for a great performance. Oh, yes, and Anna Mae Wong. Oh, well, I'll pass your compliments along, C.P., in case they don't catch us on the air. Uh, by the way, before I forget, I want to tell you, I was glad to get Irving Landy's call from the Hollywood Coordinating Committee to do one of your shows for the Army and the Air Force. You know, the Air Corps, it was the Air Corps then, was my first love. Anything for those lads in service. Yes, I know, and you still do a lot of flying yourself. Every time I call your house at Malibu, you're either in your wood shop or you and Judy, your daughter, are flying around the country somewhere. Well, I am beginning to get Judy air-minded. She does pretty well for all of her six years. <laughs> Fact is, we're going on a little trip now, and I should be getting along, if you'll excuse me, C.P. Certainly, Brian, and happy landing. Thanks. And now, before I leave, what's in store for your listeners next week? Well, next week, Brian, and ladies and gentlemen... Kent Smith will be our star in the title of our romance comedy, The Aurora. Kent Smith portrays an ambitious artist who makes a better draftsman. As an artist, he finds romance. As a draftsman, he gets fired. Art is his first love, but his real love can't stand his art. In the compromise, he gets the girl, and art gets the brush off. Sounds pretty good to me. I'll be listening. So long, C.P. Goodbye, Brian. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when Kent Smith comes to star in a comedy romance, The Aurora. Until then, thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> Here is the courtesy of the Hollywood Gordon of the Betty, which arranges for the appearance of all stars in this program. Script was by Rich Hall, with music by Eddie Dunstetter. The program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking. <laughs>